All right, uh, I made this ball yesterday. And uh, today I like to talk about basic trimming. The uh, basic trimming is, first I will talk about uh, when is the right time to trim. Okay, when is the right time to trim. And then um, how to put your piece in the center and then trim it. And also uh, using what kind of a trimming tool uh, you can get and um, also before you trim what you what should you do okay so first to decide when is the right time to trim okay this is very uh, critical and important um the the way i decided that when is the right time to trim first i will try to squeeze the ball the rim of the ball try to squeeze it and uh, if the the rim is very firm without uh, getting um, it, without uh, movable then that's a good sign and then also uh, for the bottom usually the corner of the bottom is it's kind of a uh, uh, soft uh, easier to pinch if you can pinch and then make a dent that's too soft okay that's too soft so in this case it's not so it's good and um, the rim is firm and also I try to rub my finger on the surface. If you feel like kind of sticky, okay, it's kind of a, a little bit of a friction, that's too too wet. So uh, don't try to trim it yet. Um, and also you might wanna, once all the uh, the sign that indicate that is a good uh, trim, trimmable uh, stage, can try to use a finger nail to see if we can make any in indentation and this is good so I think this is the right time to trim okay and how do you uh, uh, dry your pieces to the right time oh this is the way I usually do uh, and when you throw a ball or something that with a, a wider rim the rim tend to dry faster so once you find out the rim is firm enough usually you want to turn it upside down and dry it all the way till it's ready to trim okay and sometimes the rim might be even too dry even you do so because the bottom you usually have a thicker clay so uh, uh, the rim usually dry faster a lot faster than the bottom part so in the case you might want to use a uh, sponge to uh, kind of uh, rehydrate the rim a bit so to even it out while you're trimming uh, while you're drying it Okay, so that's decide when to trim. Okay, when to trim. It's very important. Um, I know a lot of people don't have patience. They tend to trim it too wet. Okay, too wet. All right. And then the second one is to decide what is the shape. Okay, before you uh, turn it upside down and try to trim, what is the shape look like inside? If you inside is like a curve, then you have to trim it accordingly. Okay, if you have a corner then you have to trim outside according to what the shape looks like inside, okay? So first study what is the shape look like inside and then maybe estimate how thick the bottom is, okay? How thick the bottom is. Um, actually, you can measure it, okay? Let me show you how you can measure, give you yourself a rough idea. So you can find uh, two pieces of ruler and uh, one you put it on top of the rim and then the, the other one you put it there in the center and you can measure all right so this is about three inches and uh, almost half okay almost half i think use a millimeter might be easier okay millimeters so the other side is millimeters Right, so this is about 84, okay? And then you can measure outside. Right, it's about 90, uh, 92. So 84, 92 is, so it's about eight millimeters. When you start, you give yourself an idea that eight millimeters is not quite uh, uh, one centimeter yet okay about this thick 
Uh, actually, I have a better tool to uh, to do a more accurate measuring. This is the tool that I invented. So you can do that. Put it on the inside and then measure it. Okay, 84 and pull it out. So this is about 92, 84, 92. So it's about 8. Okay, 84, 92 minus 84. <clears throat> so it's about 8 millimeters. So give yourself an idea how thick the bond is before you start to uh, try to cut the clay so that you don't end up with uh, leaving it too much of clay too thick here and also you don't uh, trim it all the way through okay so before you start it so that's two things that you want to do make sure it's the right stage to trim okay timing is very important the second is study the shape and also uh, estimate or maybe measure how thick the bottom is before you go okay so that's two things and then the, the third uh now after you, you decided Before I start to uh, put it on the sander and then uh, uh, trim it, I like to show you uh, the trimming tool. What kind of a trimming tool you uh, you could use? So these are the trimming tools that it's maybe this tool is coming from the basic kit. Um, you are getting this kind of a tool uh, from the basic kit. Um, I'm going to use this tool to trim for the demonstration today, but. Normally I don't use this kind of a tool to trim because I hate to use the tool that is not very sharp to trim. So normally I like to sharpen my tool or make my make sure my tool is very sharp to trim. So usually I would like to uh, maybe grind it or sharpen it before I trim it. And you see that this is very thin and this kind of tool is very thin. And if you run through the uh, grinder, it's gonna be a gun within uh, maybe a couple of months and it's gone because this is very thin. And, uh, and this tool, it tend to get dull and uh, it's very hard to also, very hard to resharpen it unless you are putting, running through the uh, the grinder, the bench grinder. It's very hard to, uh, to resharpen it. So that's why I developed my design and I developed my own uh, trimming tools. So this is the uh, trimming set. Different shapes and different length uh, for different purpose of the trimming. So curve, okay, curving tool, and also long blades and straight side. So lots of uh, different uh, shapes to uh, choose from. Um, the reason I'm using this is see that consider this and this. It's a lot wider, so you have um, more uh, room to, uh, to to grind it off. Okay, so this is will last longer than this. Okay, and also for this kind of tool, you can resharpen it easily, even you don't have a a bench grinder. So what you do is get a block of wood, and then um you are going to sharpen because all the uh, edges have been beveled, okay? So if you remove a little bit of, uh, of a metal from the inner part, you will get it sharp easy and fast. So uh, just find a file. Um, usually I like to use a very uh, fine diamond file because you don't want to use a rough uh, file to do that. Um, just place, get a block of wood and place on top of it to hold it there. And then just use a, a pressure and then you, just, you can so that you are shopping on the flat side um, so that you don't end up with getting your straight edge you, you get a curve okay you still want to keep your uh, edge straight so this way when you are shopping this way you are keeping your edge straight so that's the uh, shopping easy for 
you to resharpen your tool and also this tool lasts longer okay that's why I developed this kind of a tool it's called Shin tool okay it's under my name HSIN Shin tool and I if you want to have a number okay this is a number one um, some people do uh, think the even the uh, stainless this is made out of uh, stainless steel okay stainless steel uh, it's, it's still a soft uh, material so then um, I have been uh, developed and uh, redesigned the tool. So this kind of tool is, the blade is made out of a, a tungsten carbide. Okay, tungsten carbide is very hard material. So it can last at least a couple months without uh, resharpening. Um, I've been using this for uh, since February and I haven't resharpened it yet. Okay, and it's still, uh, I still feel it very, very sharp. And even if you need to resharpen it, it's easy. The same same way I do with my stainless steel tool. So by doing so, you can sharpen it easily. So you have to consider when you are having your own tool. Uh, this tool, you know, after use, it, it tends to get dull. And uh, how long it lasts, you consider that. And also how you resharpen it, okay? That's uh, very uh, important to uh, consider to what kind of a tool is good for you. And uh, maybe it's a little bit expensive, but consider in the long run, it's worth the price, okay? Worth the price. So that's how you uh, resharpen this kind of uh, L-shaped tool, L-shaped tool. And uh, this is all designed by, by me and uh, been used for years and I sell them a lot of them on my Etsy shop so just check it out from my Etsy shop so that's just the uh, tool and I want to just use the uh, traditional tool to to show you how to uh, trim your piece All right so before I start to uh, trim it you have to make sure that your clay stay staying on the wheel head without moving okay and also you want to put your piece into the center just like when you're throwing you have to center your piece the same thing when you're trimming you still need to center your piece and i want to show you uh, a couple of different ways of, of centering uh, if you are experienced people or you, if you have been practiced the type center is the uh, faster way to to center it. okay you just slightly tap on the the spot that is off and uh, try to move it to the center okay there's a way to uh, practice and i will show you in my later video okay later video but don't worry about it if you don't know this kind of method okay uh, there's another way to do it too uh, it's called uh, try and error okay you can get a pencil okay if you don't want to but you are going to trim it eventually so the it doesn't matter if you are using a pencil or a needle tool. I I like to use just a needle tool. And uh, while uh, it, it, this one is already in the center, but I try to uh, move it up the center. So when the piece is not in the center, you can see it. Okay, the piece is not in the center. So you don't want to decide where which spot to push. Okay, so give yourself an idea which spot to push toward the center. Um, the needle tool is the, the way to find which spot is off the center. So first get a needle tool and find a very steady spot. Okay. Um, when you're holding the needle tool, hold the tool from the right hand side if the wheel is spinning counterclockwise and slightly move your tool toward your piece. You don't hold the tool like this. It's against the direction. And once your piece is touched by the needle tool, the tool might push away your part, okay? So hold the tool on a steady spot. If you have a very steady splash pan, brace your, your arm or your, your hand on the splash pan. And even uh, you can use both hands to hold the needle tool. And slowly approach to your part. And you have to hold your tool steady okay right now you see 
when I approach to it, if the piece is not in the center, you're going to end up with marking a line, a segment, okay, not a whole circle on the spot. So you know this spot is touch the tip of the needle, meaning that spot is up the center. So you can push from that direction toward the center. And the line is from here to here, so you know the middle part of the line is the spot that is up the most. Okay, so usually I will spin the wheel so that the line is toward to me, okay? And put my both index fingers, okay? On both ends of the segment, and then put my thumb in the middle. So this is the center. Um, that is the spot, that I, the direction I'm moving, the thumb, okay? slightly move toward the center and if there is a line there okay the circle line can even use the circle line to uh, judge it okay so that's my initial pushing now i want to check it see if i'm doing in push, push it in, into the right direction so do the same thing again All right if you are doing the uh, right uh, direction, your line is going to get longer, okay? Because it's more close to the center. Then if you have a, a, a whole circle, then you know it's uh, your piece in the center. So now, from here to here, it's up center. So I'm going to push this direction. Uh, just a tiny little bit okay tiny little bit okay and do one more time right so one two three is the third one here all the way to here just a tiny bit one here and here so you see that i pushed too far too much so it's on the upper the other side of it so this time i'm going to do just to a tiny little bit Right, so I think it's pretty good. I can draw the whole circle. So if you have a too many lines, okay, you can actually wipe it up, okay, wipe it up, so that you don't get confused, okay. But I think it's very good. The needle tool is touched everywhere, draw a whole whole circle. So the whole piece is in the center. Just doing this, I I did five times. If you're lucky, maybe one or uh, two or three times you will be able, you will be able to move your piece in the center. Okay. So just uh, if some people say that if my piece is not the whole or very uh, uniform, then what should you do? Just check the spot that you want to trim. If you want to trim the rim, you check the rim. You want to trim the the foot, just check the foot. Okay, check the foot. All right, so that's good. And then you could use a clay coil to uh, anchor. I usually put four, piece, four pieces of it. One here, one here, and one here, and one here. Okay. And make sure when you try to squeeze it, hold on the pot, okay? Hold it firmly, otherwise you might accidentally push your part away so hold it down okay 
I'm making sure you securely anchor it down. And by the way, usually I like to trim my part right on the wheel head because the wheel head is metal. Um, the metal doesn't absorb water, so the clay is easy to uh, stick. Okay, it's to stick on the metal. If you have a wood, uh, usually the wood absorb water, and sometimes is the clay, the anchor clay, is easy to come off. So in the case if you are using the wooden metal, or if some people they they tend to have the um, the pin, okay, the uh, back pin here it might not give not your hand while you are trimming it. So uh, if in the case you want to trim it right on the bat, you can wet your bat a little bit, okay, before you place your pot on, run the sponge to wet your bat. So that the bed absorbs a little bit of water and it's easy for your clay to anchor down. Okay, so that's all the, uh, the tips that for you before you trim. Now, before I uh, trim, I like to give myself an idea where is the location of the foot ring. So usually I am using the needle tool to draw a circle. And then another circle here. Okay, keep yourself a guideline. Of course, this is changeable. Okay, you can make it a bit wider or make it smaller. Okay, it's up to your personal preference. Usually, the foot, the smaller the foot, the whole piece looks more lighter. Okay, that's the look. Okay, more elegant. But then you need to find a balance because if your foot is too small, then it's easy to tip over. So. You want to find your balance. All right. So usually I do the uh, uh, rough cutting using the larger tool, and for the detail, especially in the middle, in the corner, I will use the final one. Okay. And for using this tool, usually you're gonna grab on your hand like this, and then uh, I usually have my left hand hold it on the side of the pot, extend my thumb. And my left thumb and then brace the tool right there okay there 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 whatever you feel comfortable and then you just cut and uh, I understand that um, this kind of tool usually it gets dull and uh, especially when you are uh, sharing the tool in the uh, studio so they don't they don't resharpen it, so they stay dull all the time. And when they're too dull, you have to trim your clay a bit softer, okay? Because the dull tool doesn't cut the clay, the dry clay easily, so that's the reason why a lot of people tend to trim their part a bit softer. So I'm just roughly removing the clay from the side. Okay, give myself an idea where is the foot ring going to be. Right, and in the middle here, you use the corner here to uh, carve out the clay. Or you can use the other corner to go. And remember, uh, we have about 80 millimeters before we start to trim. So 
uh, you don't want to go too much. Um, any millimeter, I will probably uh, leave about uh, four, three to four millimeters here. So meaning I could go four to five millimeters. And uh, again, if you have the two, you can go back there and check and see if you can reach the the goal you 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 set. Right, and then um, for the detail trimming, I'm using this smaller uh, tool. And I uh, always start from the center. Um, again, put the hand here to uh, brace it. And I'm holding the tool like holding the pencil. Right, but for experienced powder, they can just by knocking the wall at the bottom and they can decide when to stop. But for beginner, uh, you could try, try an arrow, okay, try an arrow, or you can measure it and then uh, see if this is about four to five millimeters. Right, I think this is good. Just, uh, just finish trimming. Get the corner look a bit nicer. Right, so usually I, I'm taking care of the inner part first to get it to the right thickness. And then I would decide uh, how much clay I could remove from the outside because I always compare the inside corner and outside corner. Now the outside corner is a little bit higher than the inside corner, meaning I could remove more clay. Because you want to follow the, the curve. So the outer part could be a little bit lower than the inner part. And you can tell that if your clay is soft, the, the soft clay tends to get, stick on the tool. And you see that that stage is very, uh, the right stage. So when you trim, the clay just falling. After you trim, the clay just falling up the tool.
In the very final stage, I usually spin the wheel very fast and uh, move the tool slowly so that the uh, surface will be uh, smooth. And after you're done, you could uh, use a rubber or even a metal rib to you could burnish and polish the foot. Okay, so that's the uh, the trimming of the foot. And now um, there's only one problem that when you trim, you trim here all the way, but you won't be able to trim all the way to the rim because the anchor clay is in the way. So uh, if you want to trim all the way to the bottom, or you want to take care of the rim so that the uh, line is more consistent, uh, you can turn it upside down and uh, recenter it again and uh, and just focus on the top, on the rim, and, the, and trim it. And uh, luckily, I, um, I have another uh, invention. You could, uh, without uh, turning upside down and trimming. So this is the uh, spinning tool that is spin freely, okay? You can put it right here, but you see that when we are trimming, we usually like to trim a little dome here so this is not going to be able to sit it right there then you need to have a, a companion uh, plastic glass disc okay this disc you just place on top of it and find a good center um, all the circular small circular is easy for you to find your center and then this, the spinner, okay, it's just drop right in the center. Okay, drop in. There's a little of a, a groove there, so it's driving there. And what you want to do is holding on, holding down. So there's a down pressure. Okay, uh, I saw people using uh, a cap, okay, from the uh, soda, okay, the cap. Uh, you can do that too, okay, using the cap. But this is much better, okay, much better. It's my invention. And then um, after that, hold it down and then just use a tool, just slightly go through the rim. Because you have a down pressure, so the part is it's not going anywhere. Um, you can take care of it easily. Okay, so that's the uh, small invention that uh, I invented. But now I can pick it up. Okay. Pick up. And I also use a um, sponge to smooth the rim. Uh, by the way, if you have a stoneware, um, maybe it's not a good idea to use a sponge because you tend to uh, drag out the um, the grog. So if you have stoneware, you can use a uh, paper towel or even use a, a chamois. Okay, a chamois. 
rub back and forth. Okay, so this is the uh, basic trimming, okay, basic trimming, and uh, practice, okay. Um, in the future uh, video, I will show you how to learn your tap centering. But uh, for now, just use the, the method I just show you. Use the needle to the check. All right, so uh, just want to show you the result, okay. I am uh, cutting it open and, and show you the uh, the section left the trim All right so that's after trim and you can see the uh, the wall on the bottom the thickness of the bottom From this side, and then you turn it okay. Hope this helps on the practice, make it perfect. See you next time.